I just got back from a funeral. The funeral of a man that I've hated all my life. A man I promised to kill. But not just like that, no. I wanted to make him suffer for a long time and then die. I wanted to make him cry. I wanted to make him repent. I wanted to make him regret the wrong that he had done and then die. But it wasn't to be. Age, alcoholism, loneliness and cancer did the job before I can get to them. And for what I hear, they did the job better than I ever could even in my wildest dreams. What did this man do to me that I could hate him so, you ask? Well, it's simple. He killed my mother. I didn't know her very well. Didn't know her well at all. I was only six when he did the deed. The story went like this. Two years after I was born, my father and mother were divorced. He took off into the cosmos somewhere, was never seen or heard from again. My mother, who worked as a nurse, met up with this man, Gabriel, whom she had known ever since they were youngsters. Apparently, he had a crush on her that carried forward from all those years. Well, he in his early 30s and she in her late 20s met up again and solidified that relationship that started so long ago. They lived together for more than a year. And the plan was for them to get married. He was even going to adopt me and give me his name. But then things started to go wrong. Apparently he drank and she didn't like it. There were fights, he beat her. And the whole fabric of the relationship began to unravel. She stopped, she moved on and met up with another man. Early one morning, Gabriel went to where she was staying. They got into an argument. He pulled out a gun and shot her dead. Short, simple, and complete as that. Where was I while this was going on? In the other room asleep. I heard the gunshot sound. I remember. And then there were people moving about the house. They wouldn't let me see. I remember the police and the flashing lights. That's about all. Gabriel was sentenced to manslaughter, not murder. He was given seven years and was released on parole after four and a half. Gabriel returned to the town as a hero of sorts. A man who didn't allow no woman to make a fool out of him by going with another man while he still had his claim on her. Where it was, the other man was lucky he didn't catch a bullet too. And by the time Gabriel got out of jail, that man was long gone. Gabriel went back to work. Gabriel picked up with another woman, got married, and had three children. I remember my mother as a gentle soul. And I used to dream about her a lot. So I went from one foster home to the next. Some good, some bad. I don't even want to think about it. But somehow I grew up and went to school and even got my degree. But I never forgot about that man Gabriel and what he did to my mother and me. In my quiet hours, I would scheme and plan and walk through all kinds of scenarios for exacting my revenge. And when I got tired of fantasizing, I moved back to that town. More than 20 years had passed, nobody knew who I was. 
Some things had changed, but Gabriel was still there. He was older now and lived by himself. His wife had died and his children had come to no good. Gabriel lived in a broken down old house and drank from the time he woke up in the morning until he passed out at night. Went to visit him once. He had no idea who I was. Told him I was a friend of his son Bobby. Sat for an hour and talked about things. He didn't make much sense. All he did was drink. I asked him about my mother. He couldn't remember much. He mumbled something about a whoring bitch and took a gulp of whiskey. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to kill him. But suddenly I also wanted to leave. It was as if a great distance had come between us. Even though I was no more than six or seven feet from him. So I left and went back home. But I kept in touch with what was going on. So when I heard he died, I flew back from the funeral. It's a sorry affair, really. Fifteen people, if there were that many. None of his children were present, of course. The minister said some kind words, and we all dispersed. I went to a bar and sat for a few hours, drinking and thinking. Then I left, went back to the hotel and thought some more. You carry a thing with you for so long that it becomes so hard to let go. And that's where I'm at now. The man is dead. He's gone. But the hate just won't let me go. It presses me down and squeezes me inside and it refuses to evaporate. I don't know what to do. So I'm asking you, whoever you are, to help me. I need it. I need it real bad.